Welcome everybody to another episode of HomeKit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, and here with my pal and the actor who played every single snowman in every single Christmas movie ever, mm -hmm. Stephen mm -hmm. Robles. How you doing? I'm good. Even the claymation ones. Played them all. Yeah. Believe it mm -hmm. or not. Believe yeah. it or not. Andrew, it's time for our daily, or no, sorry, weekly check-in about how <laughs> close are we for me you can say weekly but i probably check it daily just <laughs> because i want it to happen so much okay slow it's slowed <laughs> down it's slowed down a little bit this week it looks like currently we have 781 subscribers on the honkit insider youtube channel and to remind our listeners if we hit a thousand by christmas my beard will be glitterified glitterized one of those so if you want to see that i'm just saying 100 subscribers you got to go link is in show notes subscribe to the youtube channel i'm dreading it but i will do it for you mm -hmm. listeners we are definitely getting close 289 new subs in the last 28 days amazing not too bad brilliant I know. we well, make more noise keep keep them coming keep subscribing you can watch us over there i'm actually wearing a, a button-down shirt today if you'd like you can see that over on the youtube channel I'm looking very fancy over here so put that I want to point that it's out. Called a little, dapper. A little You're dapper. dapper. A little dapper. That's the word. Yep. Well, we, we have a bunch of news, and Andrew, you have snuck a bunch of things in here. You, you have emojis <laughs> as notes. I can't even decipher. It's like hieroglyphics. I don't know what they mean. And then you got this this smart home. Uh, it looks like a research study. I don't know if you personally did a, a countrywide research study or if this was <laughs> from someone else. Andrew, what, what's up with this home adoption, smart home adoption study? You know, I just thought this was, I, I obviously get a lot of PR, right? Sure. <clears throat> and a lot of times there's, you know, there's stuff that's specific to Mac and Apple and like iPhone production rates and stuff like that. But this one was actually relevant to, you know, HKI. Yeah. They did a study about 10,000 homes and they, uh, it's from Parks Association, the ones who did this. Not Parks and Rec. That's a different thing. Different. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Different. Yep. Just, just check. Um, yeah, and just a couple things that I thought were interesting I pulled out of the study. So doorbells and locks are the, they say hottest, smart home categories Not. to date in 2021, hmm. with adoption reaching 11 and 9% respectively. So 11% adopting smart doorbells and 9% of people adopting smart door locks. The doorbell um, thing has got to be ring. <clears throat> it's got to be all those. Of new course homes. it is. Yeah. Especially when we were just talking about how people are getting them for free. Yeah, exactly. For like between all the partnerships they've done, like the fact, like we bought our house, somehow it just came with a ring. No charger or other things, but hey, it was pre-installed for us. I do, I find the door locks interesting because I've always felt like <clears throat> someone's initial foray into the smart home world would probably be like a light bulb or a smart light. I agree. But door locks, you know, because that's also like a trust step. You know what I mean? Because usually when I talk to people who are skeptical about smart home stuff, they're like, I don't want to trust my door lock to uh, the internet. So I don't know. You know, I think that's interesting. The door lock. Well, I think they're the ones that grew, like grew the fastest this mm. year is what I'm thinking. Because like, like the next part that I pulled out here was like smart TV adoption was like 56%. Right. It's interesting. So the fact that there's like, you know, 56, like clearly those aren't the highest percentage of people using smart home tech. But, and I also wonder what counts as like, a smart door lock like is it just one that has a keypad built in or is it mm -hmm. one that's connected through your phone um right. that's interesting. Yeah. so this question um yeah and uh smart speakers 53 percent adoption mm -hmm. i thought that was interesting i, I would um, so love to see the <laughs> echo versus anyone else breakdown <clears throat> like, I, I would wager it's probably 80 percent echo what would you think Probably. I, I would actually say drop that down a little bit because the HomePod Mini has made HomePods a little yeah more, but the Google Speakers also have done quite a bit. Like, there's a lot of people home with the Google Home displays. Well, and also, like, we're giving away Google Speakers periodically in the last, like, year or two. Like, literally zero dollars. You could just get a Google Speaker. Yep. And it's like, remember, if you're not paying for a product, you're the product. <laughs> Just little I've, and I have gotten so many Echo Dots and so many Google Home Minis yeah. just as free bundles around the holidays with stuff. And so like, you, you most your of house them are sitting them. in the box, and then I can't even I can't even like sell them to anyone because nobody wants them. No, like because they either have you know. one that they got for free or it's like I don't want any more. Yeah, 
Totally. Yeah. You just you use them as insulation in your house. You just put them in the walls. That's all you got to <laughs> do. Stack them up. Yeah. I thought the video yeah, but, thing, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Go ahead. What are you going to say? No, well, you, I want, you, you do it. It's, it's your thing. But the video services thing I thought was interesting. So you're saying the 82% of broadband households dis- subscribing to at least one streaming service? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious who that 18% is that are like, no, no streaming service at all. Like that's all of our grandmothers. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But also, I, I, I kind of want to do. I want to see more data as like, what is the percentage that has one service, and what is the percentage that has more than one? Because <laughs> I got like six. It's so stupid. I mean, it's because now, Ugh. like, there time was. If I have Morgan Freeman, this thing, time was that you could pay for like one, maybe two streaming services and have all the stuff that you want. And now it's like if you're gonna pay for one you're going to end up paying for five. Like there's just no way around it. Yeah. So, okay. So what, what ones are you subscribed to? Confession oh, here, time. What here we are you go. Subscribed to? Here we go. All right. So we got Disney plus, obviously Apple TV plus as a part of the bundle. You know, we got Hulu. I don't pay for it because it's bundled with my cellular carrier, but HBO max, I have HBO max. And if you want to count Amazon Prime, I don't watch anything on there, but I pay for Amazon Prime. So I have Amazon Prime. That's five. And I think that's it. Did I say Hulu? Yeah, I said Hulu. So five. I have five streaming services currently. What about you? Okay. Um, <laughs> 32. <laughs> okay. People know I like video. Yes, so yes. I, I let's go through all the of courses. Uh-huh. Like, of course, there's Netflix. Sure. Of course, there's Amazon. I do watch things on Amazon. Bosch is great. The Boys, great. Uh, oh, yeah. Miss Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah, there's some good shows on Amazon. So okay. Netflix and Amazon, Hulu. Yeah. I think I have the cheaper version of Peacock, the ad, the ad one. Right. But it is the paid one because you can like watch episodes of of The Office that are like. Right. 40 some minutes with all of like these extra scenes added in. So yeah, I've got the, um, initial version of Peacock. Okay. Apple TV plus. Sure. And then I'm still one of those people who are grandfathered into the HBO, no, sorry, the Showtime and Paramount plus bundle. Cause I had like the CBS all access with param with a Showtime, oh. for, like 10 bucks a month. You got like one for free. Wow. So I'm basically paying five bucks for each of them. And if you ever cancel so, it, you can't get it back. Correct, and then there's that thing where they canceled it for everybody, and oh, then no. no one said, and then no one knew what happened, and then like the mm-hmm. next day, like two days later, it was like two days later, everyone just had it back again, and there was never any confirmation about what happened. It was just gone, and then everyone mm-hmm. got it back again. I don't know, That's wild. but yeah, so I'm still grandfathered into that one. So that's seven so uh, far, and there's there's Disney Plus. Did yeah. I count Apple TV Plus yet? Yes, you did. So that's eight okay. so far. So yeah, Disney Plus is on there. We I technically have HBO, but we have like that's I'm not paying for that one, but we at least watch it. That's it. Um, we have like a the, our family like Lake House has like Direct TV, and since there's nothing yeah, ever on TV, we always have that. So. Right, right. So it's like eight, to eight one, to nine, roughly eight to yeah, nine, somewhere in there, somewhere around that category. Assuming I'm not forgetting <laughs> anything. All right, so here's In what all of that. listeners here and viewers, here's what you need to do. Go to the HomeKit Insider Podcast and Apple Podcast, even if you don't listen to it there. Leave a five-star review and tell us in that review how many streaming services you have and you've like <laughs> actively pay for and watch. You know, I, I'd be curious. But, man, Peacock, I see, I do Paramount and Peacock like month, like a month, if there's like a movie or something I want to see on there, I'll pay. See, I like the ones that you can turn on through Apple TV channels. Yes. That makes it so yes. convenient. Like, cause we've done that with stars. Like, oh, you can rent right. this movie for $10, but it's also available on stars. Right. Like, okay. So we're like stars for the month. Exactly. And then yeah. cancel it again. I, I'm in favor of that. When you rent a movie, like you want to, Rent a movie. Let's say I you can't get it on a streaming service. So you're going to pay the 4 or $5 to rent a movie. Do you do that or do you just buy it if it's like $15? I would rather just buy it. I really hate renting. Yeah. It's usually like 3 or $4. And it's at those points, it's usually like an older movie. Mm-hmm. And at that point, the movie is probably like 7 to $10. There's 
there's those random cases where you can't stream it and it's twenty dollars to buy right. and three dollars to rent. In that case, I'm probably just gonna find another movie because like yeah. none of those <laughs> solutions make me happy. But I'd right. rather buy it than rent it. Yeah, my situation is with kids, like actually trying to finish a movie in 48 hours can sometimes be a challenge because like we want them to go to bed at a decent time and whatever like stuff happens and there's been multiple times where i've had to rent something multiple times like we'll rent start watching and then we forget to finish it or can't get around to it and then the 48 hours are gone and it's like am i going to spend another five dollars to rent this thing to spend like a total of ten dollars or should i have just bought it for 15 and so i end up usually just buying a movie if i'm going to do that or pay for a streaming service for a month you know if i'm going to do that so that's how it goes that's how it goes but anyway that's an interesting study so very cool well we also have other news so amazon actually launched some smart switches that are branded amazon basic smart switches these are kind of interesting for several reasons. One, there's no matter support in these smart switches, so that it would not be HomeKit compatible. Amazon says that these were developed before matter came out or before they like committed to it. So, mm, okay. Uh, neutral wire is required, so it won't be for everyone. But these are super cheap. These are like 18 to $21 for a smart light switch. A single pole is like $18. You can get a dimmer switch for like $21. And they, but they only work with... Amazon and their Echo devices. They will not work with HomeKit or anything else. So I thought this was interesting. This is like Amazon's first, oh, their self-branded switches that are like really cheap. But again, you know, we talked about Ring last time. Like, will Amazon bring Matter support to the Ring and you like give other smart home ecosystems the ability to use those devices? And it's like, mm, they said, you know, this was because they developed these products before Matter or whatever. But I'm like, hmm. I don't know. I'm getting it smells fishy. This, I think this is a pure money play, hitting up all the people who don't know what they're doing, <laughs> and they're buying their Echo devices, right. and Amazon can push these things on them because they're first party, and just locking them more into the Amazon ecosystem yeah, versus sending to third party companies. I mean, ser okay, so they just, you know, they just committed to Matter. They didn't foresee this, right? Exactly. <laughs> A year ago or something. Yeah. Hell, Matter was supposed to be out know, this right, year. Exactly. So they would have been having these discussions one to two years ago, like when it was announced. They've been on. Thank you. I think it's a terrible, it's such a yep. cop out for that as an excuse. They're just meant to be cheap and Amazon only. They are not meant to play with anyone exactly. else. Like they're literally like advertising as like Echo exclusive. Right. Like they're using it as a branding thing, right. like it's somehow a good right. thing to <laughs> lock you in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is a feature, right. and for them, it probably was. I do not believe that they were purposely trying to make a decent smart switch for anyone. They're just basic money grab. Agree. We're gonna say we'll see about Ring. I I I am mistaking my claim. Bet I don't know what you want to call it, but I claim that the Ring doorbell will not get matter support that's my prediction i have my i am waiting to see how this turns out i've got my pre-order re, pre-registration in for that ring home drone i wait excuse try me? what that is that thing. have you not seen this this made all what? of the news it's literally it like mounts and it's got like a camera and when it detects something oh. it flies up and like yeah i remember this but this is for like yeah this is for inside exactly. this isn't yeah. Yes. That, this... <laughs> yeah, an inside drone that's gonna scope out your intruder. This is a hundred percent a Terminator thing. I mean, this is totally yeah. Skynet flying around your house. Wow. Yeah. I, okay. I'm gonna put a ring in show notes because we did, the, we talked about this like a long time ago. This was like many episodes ago, but now yeah. seeing the picture of it again, it's wild. This is ridiculous. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna try one because I just want. I gotta see how this. How either awful this is or how cool it is and that other companies need to make this happen that's not amazon owned. that's hilarious okay so that's amazon now this other news i guess it's a negative apple home services the head of home services for apple his name was sam jadala he actually announced that he has left apple he announced this in a linkedin post 
I don't know what Apple people be doing using LinkedIn. But anyway, um, prior to Apple, you know, he was CEO of a smart lock company and he was VP for Microsoft in the 80s and 90s. But he was the head of Apple Home Services for two years and now he is gone. Now, according to some reports that Apple engineers are a little pessimistic about the future of Apple TV, maybe even home stuff. But I don't know. I think it's interesting that he left after just two years. That seems like a short time to be at Apple heading up an entire division. And, you know, I don't know what that uh, I don't know what that means. It might not be good. What do you think? You never know. I mean, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad yeah. thing. Um yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Know. He did so. His I was curious because his smart lock company was Auto, uh, and they went defunct. Ooh. So his smart lock company did not work out before joining Apple. But I mean, people have argued with Apple. Like people have been arguing, Apple needs to start making their own first party hardware. Like imagine an Apple, you know, wall switch or something like that, where you have the option of choosing an Apple one or a third party one, similar to how they kind of did the Home right. app. Like they originally didn't even have a Home app for Home Kids. <laughs> right. Like use just third-party options so there people have been like saying that apple should make their own they made their own home app they should make their own home kit hardware and join that with what third parties hmm. are doing but i don't know what they're gonna do but hey if they bring in someone new and get some new kind of life going on new blood could yeah be a good that's thing. true that's yeah. true all right well we'll see are right, this other uh this is a new product, the Turn C Light. This is a brand I had not heard of. This is a Shanghai-based smart home company. We'll have to see if this actually comes to the States. But they actually announced a new ceiling light, much like the Acara L1 ceiling light that we talked about on last week's episode. Very low prof profile, round disc type light. Uses adaptive lighting, Zigbee for connection. It does require a hub, but I thought this was interesting. This Turn C lights the hub the turn c hub that you need to get for it is actually also a certified airplay 2 device so the hub is a certified airplay 2 device with a quarter inch audio out port so this hub can actually act as a bridge to some analog speakers you might have or even a sound system where you can plug a sound system into this hub and then use it as an airplay 2 destination and I just thought that was a genius move for a hub. You know, and no one likes having a ton of hubs, but if they can dual duty as something else, like an AirPlay 2 speaker thing, that's pretty sweet. So I thought that was, I thought that was cool. Hopefully this comes to the States. We'll see. Turn C. Yeah. All right, this next one is another brand that seems to be new on the scene, Smart Wings. Smart Wings has now introduced a HomeKit blind option so like hunter douglas like we've talked about before and they have their own now smart wings roller shades home kit compatible and these are about in the 180 to 200 dollar ish range and they use a bluetooth chip that is capable of supporting thread they do not support thread right now but they could be updated to support thread in the future kind of like how some of those nano leaf devices didn't ship with thread but with a firmware update, we're enabled to use Thread. So just great to have another smart shade option. And that's HomeKit compatible. There you go. Now you have some cryptic things uh, here in our notes, Andrew. You, it says wireless charging with the side eye. What, what, what are you talking about here? What is this? Is this a MagSafe thing? It's not MagSafe, uh -huh. but I thought this was too cool to too cool not... For check out mm -hmm. real quick so especially going to ces every year i always would see like these wireless charging demos and they were super specific about like true wireless mm. charging where you could just basically be in proximity and stuff would charge like i think seen things like entire desk services they could just place your stuff on anywhere to the more weird ones where you could be like in the same room well <laughs> it seems like the first actual true wireless charging devices are set to debut like next year okay uh yeah there's going to be the biggest problem with these devices always is like you can have like your wireless charging infrastructure in your house like your signal right. repeater whatever it is it's like putting out the power but you have to have a special chip uh in the device to accept that power and transmit it to your phone right and the idea being like you just walk into your house and your phone is charging 
Like you never have to right. plug it in, set it on something. It just charges. Right. So this is like what we've all been like hoping for. Well, so the company is called Coda, C-O-T-A. Um, and yeah, so they have announced there's four devices that are going to be coming out first. There's going to be a smart home camera. You'll be able to place anywhere in your house without the battery ever dying. You don't have to worry about wires or anything like that plugging it in. There's going to be a air quality monitor to monitor your house, an item tracker, and a smart watch. Uh, the smart watch I think is really cool because just imagine like your Apple Watch just never having to charge it. That'd be it's sweet, actually. Always charged as you're around your house. Yeah, so they sent out these are I'm sending these over to you, Steven. I don't like to spoil the surprise. This is very surprising. Yeah, beforehand. I did not know. These are these are not the actual devices. These are just kind of like mock-up renders of what the devices would be. But basically, they're partnering with third-party companies to build these chips into their devices. One of them that I had to mention, too, that they had showed off was a phone case from Spigen, mm -hmm. an iPhone Ooh. case. So you can actually just, and this is like we saw before. So they had done this like before. So I'm hoping that Spigen actually gets to release this product. But yeah, it's a Spigen iPhone case. Mm. Slap it on, your phone's charged. So... This stuff is real cool, and we're it, who basically they're gonna have to pick a standard, kind of like they did with right. Qi. There was like several wireless charging standards, and then Qi became the most right. prevalent. So as there's multiple companies working on this true wireless charging, just to be in your house or in a room, it'll be interesting to see which one like takes off. But this is the first one that I've actually seen to like be releasing products, yeah. uh, or more or less like partnering with someone to release the products. But yeah. Super cool stuff. Okay, so this is really cool. I do have to say, though, like, I am not worried about radio waves in my brain, usually. Like, I don't I don't think holding my phone to my head is going to be detrimental to my health or that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are going to, like, affect me. But I feel like wireless electricity, like, I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> like, I think I'm going to wait and see for some testing to happen and you know just just see how it affects people like does anybody turn into an x-man if that's the case i'll buy it immediately but I, i'm just i'm a little curious like wireless power i don't know i have no data i have no experience to to say like why it's different but it just feels like that kind of wave passing through the air which i don't even know what it is like i don't know what it frequency. says rf it's, it's radio rf frequency mm-hmm I don't understand how that works over RF, I guess, but I mean, it's amazing and l like would really love that convenience, but I don't know. I want to see some other people use it for like five years, <laughs> see how it goes, <laughs> see how it affects them. I don't know. Do you, do you have any concern like that? Or are you just like, nah, nah, I'd put this in my house today. Uh, probably put, put it in my house today. Probably. Really? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes through like, yeah. No, I wouldn't I know really we got, too, we have, too much about it. I know. We got radio waves like AM, FM radio, which has been around for decades. You have the Wi-Fi. You have Bluetooth. You have Thread. You have, like, NFC. You have the, the ultra-wideband chips. Like, I know there's, like, a ton of radio waves. But I don't know. I feel like there's actually been studies on those kinds of things. I actually looked up some research to see, like, has anything ever been found? Because, you know, 5G, when 5G was a thing, I mean, it's still a thing, but <laughs> when it was announced, it was like, there's flocks of birds falling out of the sky. And, you know, I, you know, I look, cause I had people literally ask me like, what does this mean? Like there's a 5g tower going up in my neighborhood. Do I have to worry about brain cancer? And like, I literally did research to see like what actually happened. Like there was some 5g test in Oslo or whatever, and some birds died, but it was like unrelated. It was just happened at the same time. And so people, you know, there was a correlation, not a causation, but people jump to the conclusion. So, you know, research and knowledge is helpful. <laughs> you know, people, you know, I like people need to know like, okay, it has actually been studied and that kind of stuff. So that's all I'm saying is like, I'm curious to see what a study of this kind of stuff would be like, let someone sit in a house that has wireless charging throughout the entire house. Just let them sit there for like a week. Just soak it all up. Let's see what happens. That's all I'm saying. I just want to see what happens. Okay, and you don't think they've done that? You don't think they found, like, an intern and were like, hey, we just need you <laughs> to do some desk work in this padded room. And not like, tell for... them what's happening? Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Listen, if anything starts growing out of your forehead, <laughs> just let us know. You don't have to worry about it. Just let us know. It happens. Yeah. 
listeners, I'd be curious. Tweet at Andrew and myself. What I mean, would you put wireless charging in your house today, or would you want to wait a minute? That's all I'm saying. That's all. I'm just curious. This isn't even out today, and you don't think that they have done plenty of testing. I mean, that's not going to go well mm. for the company if people start growing extra hands out of their foreheads. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I know it's not going to be like that. Although I would love to be an X-Man. Let's just be real. I would love that to make me a mutant. But you know, sometimes things take uh, the effects take time. That's all I'm saying. I just want to see. I just want to see it over time. Research over time. That's science. You know, <laughs> study something over time. Anyway. They're very cool, though. Love this technology. Uh, that's the side eye I'm giving it. That's why you put that emoji in there. Okay, so then you say something about scene flow. Tell me about scene flow. Yeah, a couple new app updates this week. One app to update, one app release. So first one, scene flow. Really nice little like kind of dashboard building tool for your HomeKit Home uh, is available now on iPad. So it was available on iPhones. Now a recent update came out. Let's do it on your iPad too. Works real well with that iPad Mini because you can just like oh. kind of build. There's like a free version and a paid version, but you can create your own like dashboard screen. So if I was building one for the studio, while well, having maybe a lot of lights, I'm like I really care about like my main lights. I care about like pulling up the camera feed, a um, couple other pieces that you can kind of put in there. So I really like it. I don't use it all that often just because I'm I need like a good spot to like mount and power an iPad or something all the time. But mm. I just love these ideas of like these dashboarding tools, which goes to my second one, mm. which is a whole lot of stuff going on here. It's called Viz Designer. And mm. Stephen, you have not seen anything like this app before. I'm telling you. I have not. So it's literally two parts of the software. So there's an app for your phone mm -hmm. or your mm -hmm. iPad. And then there's an, a second app that you do on your Mac. So you first send it on your phone and you sync your HomeKit devices. And it's basically just pulling an itemized list of what devices you have in your home and what rooms you have, all that kind of stuff. Then you go over to the Viz Designer software on your Mac. And it's like you're building a freaking website. <laughs> no joke. You drag and drop everything. Do you want buttons? images, text fields, uh, clocks, date, date time, sliders, round buttons, um, camera feeds, all of a sudden you just drag it right onto like mm. your surface. And you can do, I mean, if you wanted to be someone who's going out getting an icon set and like building everything up from scratch, you can literally design your own home kit app. So you could, this could be as simple as just like the buttons to control things, dashboards to give you statuses, like camera feet, whatever you want to do, you can build it with this software. So you build it here, then you click on this little cloud button in the app and it shoots it back up. You go back to your phone or your iPhone or your tablet and it like you hit like load remotes and it'll pull down anything that you made in the software and then it runs on your phone. And you like literally Whoa. built your own HomeKit app. I've been playing around with it. It's a little confusing, even with a uh, web design background, like some of the stuff gets a little confusing at what they're trying to do. And it could be because some stuff is still like, you know, a 1.0 release. Like I'm trying to set a background, like, something super basic. I'm trying to set a background image and you can, there's like option to scale to width, scale to height, keeping your aspect ratio of your image, all that kind of stuff. And it's like not showing up for me. So there's like small bugs like that. But I was able to like drop in some camera feeds and some buttons and then pop it up on my iPhone and there it is. Like if you drop in like a slider, like they have like themed sliders, like click on a slider and then I can change like the style of that button. There's a whole thing of built in styles from like all sorts of weird ones and you pick what you want and then you can show, you can assign it to uh, an action or a device so I can do a command i can be a it can be a light and it can do brightness wow yeah so uh, you can get really real specific in how all this stuff is controlled it's it's really really neat and it can take a lot of time to play with to fully understand and design something that actually like there's no like pre-built designs for you so everything is your own doing for better or for worse this looks amazing i mean especially Let's say you wanted to be like real extra and like put an iPad mini in your house as the home controller kind of thing and you can totally customize it. That's nuts. This is wild. So it's 
actually on sale right now for $15. It's going to go up to $25 after December 31st. So you have till the end of the year if you want to get, you know, almost half off. It's like 35, 40% off. It looks amazing, though. Very interesting yeah. idea. And it's, and it's a decent amount for an app, but I never mind paying for a good app and supporting those developers, especially ones in the HomeKit space that are making all these nice apps. Very cool. Well, I'll put links to those apps in the show notes, of course. Scene Flow looks really sweet, and Viz Designer. Very cool. And speaking of deals, just as a side note, keep your eyes peeled on AppleInsider.com because obviously this episode is airing on Black Friday week. So in just a few days, it's going to be Black Friday. There's probably already deals going on. Then you got Cyber Monday after that. So keep your eye on AppleInsider.com. Our friends at SwitchBot actually have a bunch of Black Friday deals too. We have episodes about SwitchBot from way back when. That's switch-bot.com slash Apple Insider if you want to see what they got going on. But again, so many people are going to be having deals, and we post deals pretty much all the time. But Black Friday especially, keep your eye on AppleInsider.com for that. Now, I, I forgot to get it actually before we even talked about it, but I posted pictures Obviously, there'll be a picture in the, the chapter art. <laughs> <laughs> but we talked about last time Find My on the Apple TV remote. And so I bought one of these janky silicone cases, which <laughs> we had a couple listeners send in pictures of ones that they have. And there are some, I mean, let's just be honest, like not like really not good looking Apple TV Siri remote cases. And these are cases that have a space to put an air tag. So you can basically have AirTag find my support and l- be able to beep it so you could try and find it in your couch cushions, all attached to your remote. But these are all silicone cases that go around the remote for the AirTag. So there's some really janky ones out there that just look wild. Like, I don't even understand who designed these things. But the one I got, I mean, it adds bulk to the remote, but it's a, a curved back. You could even say it's a little more ergonomic as a remote. Feels fine. Has the little wrist lanyard so you can put that around your arm if you're using the apple tv remote and it has a place for the air tag this little pocket inside so i didn't even see the air tag on the outside it's just in the silicone case and i did it i got the case we got an air tag 40 dollars later <laughs> i have find my support on my apple tv remote and i used it once already to ding it honestly you know the find my part like it's somewhere in the living room. you know i mean it's not like we're gonna be taking this thing out of the house but to be able to make that sound make the air tag ping so you can actually just locate it in the room audibly uh, you know it's nice to have obviously yes apple should just straight up build this into the apple tv remote so you don't need to you know know, like duct tape an air tag to the back of your remote but you know you can get it you can get one of these cases and actually do it and i'll put a link to the one i got in show notes if our listeners want to try it and Andrew, Andrew just can't believe I did this, apparently. He just thinks it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I do think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I think it still looks awful. It's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I blame all of you people out there who complains about the glass surface of oh. the controller. Mm. So because of all you complainers... Apple decided the only option was to do an all metal one so that when you dropped it or your children mm. threw it across the room, it would not break. <clears throat> and still, mm. I had ne- we had dropped ours multiple times onto hardwood floors. Never broke. I don't know why. Maybe we're just lucky. But yeah, when they switched to this all metal design, I don't think there's any way for that signal to get out. And even on an AirTag, most of it is that plastic shell. So though Apple does have like those small plastic bits on the controller, like just the front of it where signals can come out, like the Bluetooth signal and stuff, that's not going to be enough for an AirTag. So they would have had to have a different design completely to do the whole AirTag thing. It would have had to have a plastic, like hmm. larger plastic component. Cause I don't even think, take it like the directional stuff. Like AirTag is like so much of that surface area of having that signal come through. I think it just does a better job of getting like direction and everything. Yeah. So, I don't know. They would have had to have a different design, which I'm not against because I never was a huge... I didn't love the super silvery look of this one to begin with. I kind of still like the last gen more, but 
I mm-hmm. just I hate the idea of just like sticking a giant silicone cover on it. Looks like a knockoff Wii <laughs> controller. And just it does. It does. You're not wrong. Not wrong. I just hate that this is a spot that we're in. It's like, oh, cool. Apple didn't include that. So everyone's got to spend 40 some bucks on just a silicone sock and a, another air tag even just so they don't lose in their couch cushions. Even if they just made it make a sound, like even if it didn't have the U1 chip, like yeah, for precision. Yeah, basically Bluetooth and just find, yeah. yeah, just beep at you. And it's already got Bluetooth, I think, because that's how mm-hmm. the remote works. So yeah, just make it make yep. a sound. Just put a little speaker on it. You know, this is something where I think it's the Amazon Fire remote. It actually has a headphone jack in the remote where you, or maybe it was the Roku where you can actually like Roku's got a headphone jack in the remote Roku where you can actually like plug a physical pair of headphones into the remote to hear what's being streamed. I mean, Mm -hmm. pretty cool. I mean, you know, with the AirPods integration on Apple TV, you know, they have an answer for that, but letting the remote be, you know, a more powerful part of the experience because it's an expensive remote. I mean, the new Siri remote is like what? $90, $80 or something like that. $300 Three hundred dollars, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. exactly. So anyway, make it make a sound, Apple. Let us do it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, we actually have some listener questions. Let's get to them before we close out uh, this Ecobee thing. I think we talked about it last week about the smart door and window sensors, or was there something else? I don't know, but I know I did not put that in there. I don't think, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it might have been a holdover. But I did yeah. see somebody say on the YouTube video that the. I'm, I don't know if they – actually, I'm not even sure if they're saying the right thing that I thought they were saying. But they're saying Ecobee sensors are home kit, and they work with RF, so the coverage is great. But I don't know if they're talking about the regular home kit sensors, like mm. the ones they've had for a while, just called smart sensors, or if they're talking about the new door-window motion contact sensor combo ones that mm. are a little different. I, I still think they probably are because like, I know the regular sensors are for sure home kit. So Rob L says Ecobee sensors are home kit. Right. But I'm not sure if he means the new ones or not. But I, I think they do. I just haven't tried it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll put that link to the Ecobee sensors. I know we talked about it last week uh, as well. So you can check them out on their website. Now, that nerd JB tweeted at me with a question Can you switch home kit home hubs? Or once you make a decision, is it permanent? We've talked about this before on the show, and I actually jumped into my home settings because you could see which of your devices is the primary home hub in your home. And you can do that by going to the home app, hit the little home icon in the top left, go to home settings, and then go to home hubs and bridges, and you will see all the different devices. Uh, It's a little bright there, but anyway. (laughs) You can see all the different devices that are acting as home hubs. Your HomePods, Apple TVs, all that kind of stuff, and bridges. So if you have like a Philips Hue bridge, the Acara, all that, it's all there. Actually, let me uh, let me do it one more time. Let me lower my brightness and let me get it to focus. Boom. There's all the home hubs and all the home bridges, and that's right there in the home app. But there is not a way to, in the app, say, use this as my main primary home hub can't do that let's just by tapping on it in the app like it doesn't do anything like you just tap on this does nothing now i actually discovered that one of my home pod minis are acting as my like primary home hub and i thought that was strange because i have like the new apple tv 4k and that's the first device i set up in this house and so it seems like maybe by way of which ones are powered on at the time or some kind of if I had to maybe reset it, I can't remember, but it seems strange that it's using a HomePod mini that's at the far end of the house, like far away from many of my other devices. Like my Apple TV is like center and is, you know, it has thread now, you know, the new Apple TV has thread. So I don't know why I did that. But anyway, you can try to unplug whatever device is acting as the primary home hub. So like you can go unplug all your home pods or whatever and leave the one device plugged in that you want to be the primary wait till the home app recognize it and recognizes it in this menu sees it as the primary and then try to plug in the other things no guarantee it'll stay that way because like i said mine is switched to a home pod mini at the far end of the house for some reason and no idea why but there's not a way to like just tap one and make it the primary you have to do like unplug things and you know maybe reset stuff so it's weird but that's been has that been your experience too I've never really messed with it, but I know that's the option. Apple just likes to make things 
seamless and easy and doesn't give you a lot of options sometimes, this is one of those times. <laughs> They're just not giving you the option to change it because they think it should just be handled in the background. But sometimes it does weird things. So yeah, the only option is to unplug all of your hubs, plug in the one you want to be the hub and let it get connected and settled and add everything else backward. Right. All right. And this last question, or actually this is an app kind of suggestion from Tim Rand on Twitter. He tweeted at me, this is an app called Hub for HomeKit. It is a free app. I don't see any in-app purchases. It just seems to be a free app. Basically, it is claiming to be a HomeBridge substitute. So if you have devices that are not HomeKit compatible, like Amazon Nest devices, maybe old Wemo devices, uh, Samsung TV, Yee Light or whatever, or some robot vacuums. This app is saying if you download this app to one of your devices like an iPad, it can act as a HomeKit bridge between those other devices and the HomeKit. So you can maybe manage those devices like the Nest or old Wemos in the Home app that you couldn't previously do because they weren't HomeKit compatible. This is exactly what HomeBridge does. HomeBridge, you have to run it on a Mac or you can get like the Hoobs, the little PCs or the Raspberry Pis and you run HomeBridge on that and then you can make other devices compatible with HomeKit that way. I use HomeBridge for a couple things and HomeBridge works great for me. This app, I'm a little curious about one that it's free and I don't know, that seems a little weird to me. HomeBridge is also free, but it's like, a little like open source kind of like nerdy code stuff and for some reason like i feel like it's less trying to steal my information <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> and i'm not sure how this communicates with those other devices if it's like cross app or whatever i have to imagine that there would be some connectivity drops with an app like this if your ipad is being used as the home hub i mean if you leave the house any device that's you know using this as the bridge would be disconnected. So I'm not super confident about all of that. But it's interesting. Uh, Tim, if you tried it or if anyone else has tried it, I'd be curious to hear their experience. I'm going to stick with HomeBridge. Again, it's free if you have a Mac, especially a desktop Mac that you can have HomeBridge running on in the background. It's you know pretty simple to set up. It takes a little work, a little learning curve. But HomeBridge has been super, pretty solid for me. But I think it's interesting this app is out there. I'm definitely going to try this. This has got a couple devices. So I don't have any of the Nest devices, but that's the biggest one. Like, yeah. easy way to try to get your Nest stuff onto HomeKit. And I love that they're, I was just reading the, the reviews. One just, one star, confused. How does it work? I need an instructional video. <laughs> and then yeah. the second one, also one star, because it is pointless for Nest devices, only works with Nest devices if you have the Google sign-in turned off. Mm, okay. I don't know if that makes it a one-star review. Uh, he, and, oh, also, also, it doesn't help with Simply Safe. It didn't promise to. <laughs> that wasn't one of the things. So, uh, you know, questionable reviews here. But yeah, so Nest devices are the big ones. Casa, they don't support HomeKit except for mm. that one random plug. Uh, so <laughs> that's interesting must be older Wemo devices because obviously all the new ones do support HomeKit natively. Uh, Yee Light, the Neato Robot Vax, those are pretty popular. Right. Uh, Maris, because Maris has some non-HomeKit stuff and right. they're on the list. And Samsung Smart TVs. I got a Samsung Smart TV. So I have specifically, I've got Casa stuff and the Samsung TV. So I'm interested to see how those all work with HomeKit here. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to try this out. Okay. And see how it works. I mean, it works on your, you can do it on your Mac too. It looks like, nope, never mind. No, 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 For no. some reason, like the link in Safari took it to the Mac. Mm, yeah. I don't, uh, I mean, when you click the link, it just says iPad and iPhone. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, no, it's just like, oh, not, but you can, hmm. well, I think they are letting you run the iPad app on the Mac in the, I can't even, what is, what is it called? No. I know what you're talking about. I can, um, but no. I can get it. What? Are you on your Mac Pro? Oh, they probably made That's it one. M1 compatible only. Yeah. You got it. You're still <sighs> on that Intel train, bro. That's why. <laughs> anyway, that Apple Silicon Mac Pro will be coming out in the next six months. Don't worry about it. Womp womp. Upgraded that thing. 
Anyway, yeah, I think this looks cool. I mm. think this is definitely worth a try. And I'm well, exactly what you're talking about. I wonder how this works with um, when you're not at home, if it's like setting something up uh, elsewhere. But it, it right. says the app has to be running in the foreground. Like you can't go through and be one of those people who quits all your apps. Um, also, mm. there was just an update out uh, a couple weeks ago that did fix the Google sign on issue. And now it works if you have Google signed in on your Nest devices. So there you go. Getting updates. Oh. We'll try it. All Report right. back next week. All right. Very cool. Well, thank you, listeners. Keep the questions coming. Let us know if you would put wireless power in your home and become an <laughs> X-Man today. Leave us a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts with, what, what did we say to put in there? How many we streaming said, services you got? That's right. Good memory. Good callback. So do that. Also, subscribe to the HomeKit Insider YouTube channel if you would like to see glitter in this beard after Christmas. And, uh, you know, I'll post a picture on Christmas. So, you know what I mean? It's, it'll be a festive spirit. You know, we'll tweet that out. And you can also... Do, 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 jingle bells. I don't forget. I don't I got nothing well, else. That this was ending it. went off the rails. <laughs> it went off the rails. Anyway, mm-hmm. listeners, thanks for... Keep your questions, home projects in. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.